Hi everyone. So in our last video, we looked at the practical examination, which is changed from a plate and a pipe into one eight segment uh, question paper where you have to choose what the defect is, if it's acceptable to a class A acceptance criteria and a class A acceptance criteria. So that's part one of the new three part exam. In this video, we're going to look at how the multiple choice questions, the 80 multiple choice questions are structured and how you can kind of make your way through them. So with that, I go on to here. Yep, I'm working great. So what we've got is a part one or the leading question part. So here we've got an increase in heat input may cause the following. So our answers are lack of fusion, lack of toughness, uh, an increased hardness or an increased cap height. So with this, an increase in uh, heat input will lead to slower cooling rates, which will allow the grain structure to grow larger, which will drop our toughness values. So we can say, right, lack of toughness for part one. And then in part two, we've got a following question okay with reference to the previous question which welding process uh, position would likely cause this so with this we've got to look at well which welding position would create the highest heat input potential um just based on position of course because we don't know the amps or the volts or the travel speed etc so what we can see here is probably a vertical up position out of these ones would cause the highest heat input value and that is pf so we can take both and they go that's the our questions so you can see how part one is leading into part two if you get part one incorrect there is a good chance you will also miss the questions for part two so what this is doing is saying do you know the book answer to part one and then do you know the practical implication of that within part two is it is a good way of, of looking at it so let's have a look at another one we've got um which element is added to steel to improve toughness so we've got nickel molybdenum aluminium or manganese now we add manganese to steel to make carbon manganese steels uh, because that has a good increase in toughness with a smaller increase in hardness. Um, so that would be manganese. Then second time, okay, well, how much of this element would we add as a maximum normally uh, with reference to question one? So we know that manganese, we add a maximum of around 1.6%. Uh, into the into the body of our by volume into our steel so that would make a carbon manganese steel again question a if you get that wrong move into question b you'll get that wrong as well very likely um and it's i mean i've picked for this example some random numbers but i would almost expect uh, you know if there was a chrome answer there would be you know a percentages for chrome and stuff in say stainless steel or something in there to kind of to catch it out you know you're going to have to understand how they're connected so then if we have a look at the final one we've got which fillet weld profile is used to improve performance so when we look at fatigue and performance we are looking at anything that's a smooth transition across the interface of the weld in the parent material so the weld tours uh, and that's generally a concave weld. Then we've got here the follow-up question with reference to the previous question. How might this be achieved? So we've got an uh, tool blending would be our uh, would be our answer. Yeah. So that is how they are connecting together. And again, you can see how getting one wrong will affect you on the next one. And you've got to be careful of that. You've got to be watching for it. And maybe potentially using part B 
to help you answer part A, you know, as well as part A to help you answer part B. If you're stuck, just look down both of the answers, you know. See if you can connect anything through nicely that might might draw you to the correct answer. Um, it's going to be different for a lot of people. One paper out of 80 questions where you're trying to do this is very different from it is now. You know, right you know, now, I, yesterday, it was still a 30 multiple choice and a 60 technical. Really what we've done is just pulled them together and then issue something, like I say, that should be able to give us a better understanding of the student's ability to connect theory with practical output. And that's going to be interesting to see how we how we get on with that and how that all uh, how that all plays out. But with that, I just want to say a very quick video just to introduce part two of the exam structure. Uh, if you've got any questions, drop them below as ever. Make sure you subscribe. We are on our way. We keep building that. But there's only you know it's only worth it for everybody if everyone starts asking questions. Any anything that might come out of it, we're getting there. People are starting to wake up, and I'm trying to answer them as I see them. I might be on my phone in a hotel somewhere on a flight, but we'll 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 push as much as we can. So I'm waffling now. So good luck and uh, with the rest of your studies, and maybe I'll see you on your three point one course.